Hello and welcome back to another Create Mod tutorial. Today we are going over the design behind me that generates cobblestone, stone, gravel, sand, and technically clay and flint, but not a ton of it. This thing generates around 8,000 cobblestone and stone, around 2,300 gravel and sand, and stores it in a pretty compact 2x2 two two space. You can always like either switch this with chests or split this into a shulk or loader or put it on a belt and send it to your main storage system. It's really versatile. And as you can see here, I have redstone links set up so that if you don't want sand for a little bit of time, you can just power the funnel that produces sand and just store only gravel, which would then up your rates. If you only are using gravel, you can get 20,000 of any of these four items per hour, which is nuts. A few more things to go over. It uses around about 9,300 stress units, which isn't too bad once you have a steam engine. It is five blocks wide by 13 blocks deep by six blocks tall, including the floor, which does have some components in it. And there are some very specific settings that even if you're using schematics, I would recommend you take a look at. For some reason, brass funnels are weird and can't split stuff up properly. so. If you are doing this setup, make sure you place this brass funnel first and then this one second. If you're using a schematic and this gets placed in for you, delete this close brass funnel and then replace it because we want this one to be the primary one because the crushing wheels back here are going to slow it down and it will create a pretty even split between gravel and sand. So with that all out of the way, I think we can get started on the tutorial. I'm going to have a list of all the items that you're going to need to build this in the description down below, as well as timestamps for chapters and things that may be troubleshooting at the very end of the build or things that you must remember, kind of like this funnel here. So let's get into it. You're going to want to, to lay out a five by 13 space here. That is six blocks tall, including the ground floor here. So five blocks in addition to this. One, two, three, four, five. So we're going to start facing towards the front of the machine. We're going to go far to the right, go three blocks in and break the, these three blocks here. So it should be two solid blocks and then three open ones like this. And then from these blocks, we're going to go in and back, break these two. And then from here, break one, two, three, four, five. So you should have six blocks here that are now gone. And then we just need to break this last block here. We're going to place our vertical gearboxes on these two blocks like this. We're then going to place our normal gearboxes in these two blocks here and then connect this gearbox with two shafts going like this. On the opposite side, we're going to run shafts all the way along here, place another shaft here and another another shaft here, not connected to this one. We then need to connect this shaft to this one with a belt. And then that is everything in the floor pretty much done. We're then going to place another vertical gearbox here on top of this first one. Then an encased fan facing upwards on top of the second vertical gearbox and a depot right next to the encased fan. We're then going to grab a shaft, place it here and connect this with the one in the ground that we made with a belt. Then we're going to come over here and place a shaft next to this vertical gearbox facing towards the back, place a gearbox connected to it, another shaft, another gearbox, and a final shaft that should be directly over this shaft in the ground here. You should then get your storage medium, whatever that is. I'm going to use chests this time just to show you that this works. In the original design, I'm using drawers here, and in my survival world, I'm going to be just dumping it onto a belt. So any of those combinations will work. If you want to put it in refined storage, if you're using that mod, you can do that too. The storage just doesn't really matter, but we're then going to put a brass funnel going to this bottom chest a hopper going into the other side with a brass funnel going into the hopper. We're then going to set this brass funnel's filter to stone. We're going to place some smooth stone here to prevent the fan that's blowing the hot cobblestone to turn it into stone from just blowing it far away into infinity. And then we're going to place a trapdoor here to prevent the lava from flowing. We're then going to set up our actual on and off circuit. We're going to place a block here with a lever on top. You can also put a lever here or here if you'd like. It doesn't really matter. And then we're going to place a redstone dust right behind this lever with a repeater going into a block. After that, we're going to place two redstone dust here that goes into a powered latch that then goes into a pulse extender, pulse repeater set to 36 ticks. That goes into two redstone dust with a pulse extender here and a pulse extender here. This second one should be at 50 ticks 
five zero with a block there and two pieces of redstone dust that lo loops back into the powered latch. We then need two final pieces of redstone dust that just go straight into here with a block like this. We're then gonna grab our second encased fan and place it here facing towards the trap door with a gearbox behind it and a shaft connecting this gearbox to this one. We're then gonna place in a vertical gearbox here up against this block with a rotation speed controller going into it. Depending on which direction you're facing, this will need to either be 256 RPMs clockwise or counterclockwise. I would just keep it on clockwise for now. And if your entire system seems to be backwards, then just switch it to counterclockwise. We're then gonna come over to this side, place a redstone torch right next to the vertical gearbox that we placed earlier. And then the second rotation speed controller facing this way and set this to 10 RPM in the same direction that you set this one to. So since I'm doing clockwise for both, they need to be clockwise. If you're doing counterclockwise, then make sure that this one is also set to counterclockwise. We're then gonna come over to this side and place a chute on top of this encased fan, a vertical gearbox next to it, facing inward with a shaft coming out of it and another shaft not connected facing horizontally to the left. We're then gonna come over here and place an andesite funnel going into this chute. Coming to the back here, we're gonna place a large cogwheel on top of this rotation speed controller with a clutch that should be right on top of this redstone torch, a vertical gearbox that should be connected to this vertical gearbox below, a sequence gear shift with the default configurations, and then a shaft like this. We then also need a shaft right next to the one we just placed and connect these three with a belt. Hey, real quick, editing Skylar here. I go over this in more detail in the later bit of the video, but you can fix this now. If you delete those four shafts and replace it with a normal gearbox under the floor, a vertical gearbox connected to that normal gearbox, and then two more vertical gearboxes, that will fix an issue that comes up later. We're then gonna grab another gearbox and place it on both of these gearboxes here, connect it with a shaft, I forgot this bit, but it's not a big deal. We're gonna place a shaft in between this encased fan and this shaft, connect it together. So then there should be a belt that goes onto this depot. And then we're gonna cover it up by placing two crushing wheels on both of the gearboxes that we just placed. So you should have four crushing wheels and no space to see anything at all. We're then gonna go ahead on this rotation speed controller, place a large cog, with a shaft connecting to this sh shaft of belts, belt of shafts. Ah, whoa, editing me again. Uh, if you did the fix that I talked about earlier, this should be gearboxes and not a belt of shafts. <laughs> Whatever. And then we're gonna come along here and place shafts up until the very end here. And then we're gonna place a vertical gearbox going upward. The last thing we need to do up at the front here is place two brass funnels going into the chest like this. After that, we're gonna come over here onto these cog wheels and place a shaft diagonally above this one and connect it with a belt. We're gonna do the same thing over here. So a temporary block here, break it, and then connect this shaft way down there with this one diagonally. It should be three shafts connected like this. We're then gonna place three volt blocks on top of starting with the smart chute and over three blocks. It should end with the brass funnels like in line with that. And then we're gonna need two more brass funnels. Make sure you place this one first coming out onto this belt and up and then place this one. And then we can also place a final funnel here going out into this second set of crushing wheels and make sure you set the filter to gravel. After we've placed that, we're gonna head over here and place another shaft on top of the one from the sequential gear shift. And then we're gonna connect these two with a belt. And then we're gonna run two more shafts over like this. And it kind of like connects with the item vault, but obviously it can't connect. Then we're gonna come to the back here and place a vertical gearbox on top of this lone floating one with a shaft coming out of it. We're then gonna come over here and place another shaft on top of these two and connect this one to this one with a belt. Then we can place it in our hoppers starting with this shaft on the belt here we're going to place seven on this side seven and then same thing on the other side one two three four five six seven so you should have placed 14 hoppers in total we're then going to place two shoots on top of the close crushing wheels and this belt set the filter of both of them to cobblestone and then place the item vault on top it should be three item vault blocks here and then on this far item shoot that goes onto the belt, we're gonna hold a right click and go to exactly equal to four. This makes it so that 
It can still keep up with the demand if you're running just one item out of the four, but also it will be able to split the items being cooked to make stone and to just be stored as cobblestone. Then right next to this vault, we're gonna place two more vault blocks. Here, this should be connected. We're going to place an andesite funnel going into this vault from this belt. And then on the underside of this vault, we're gonna place two funnels, make sure they're pouring outwards down onto the ground here and into this funnel. And then we're gonna climb up here and place down our mechanical bearings facing towards the hoppers right above the first set of crushing wheels like this. And then we're gonna place two vertical gearboxes like this, and then two more vertical gearboxes here facing each other connected with a shaft. And then we're gonna place a normal gearbox here with a shaft going into it. And then we're gonna connect these two shafts together with a belt. We're then gonna get started on the actual cobble generation part of this. So you're gonna grab your stairs and place a corner stair here connected to stairs like this and then go all the way along here until you get to the end when this stair should as well be a corner stair. So we're just gonna need to place some temporary blocks and have a corner stair here in line with the hopper. We're then gonna do the same thing on the other side. So another corner stair with the temporary block and then go all the way along here until you get to this edge where we need another temporary block and a corner stair. Next, we're gonna place three of our building blocks here. They can be any non-flammable thing. I'm just using glass because I think it looks nice. And then we're gonna place top slabs on the block above the belt. So it should go like this up until one away from the end where we're gonna place an andesite funnel going into this item vault. We can then fill in our water. This will be a good test to make sure that nothing is leaking and you have all the blocks placed correctly. We're gonna to need to fill in every single one of these stair blocks. They should all be water sources and they should all be flowing into the center like this. We're then gonna go around with more glass blocks and start placing them around pretty much everything here. So on all the stairs, on these three building blocks, along the stairs here as well, and then in the center like this. We can then place in our 14 buckets of lava and then glue the cobblestone blocks that it makes, or the stone blocks in this case, glue all of these together so you just don't fall in. Look into the lava, walk all the way along, and then right click again. If you go under the build, you should see this green glue line underneath showing you that it actually is glued together. And we want the same thing on the other side here. And then you can verify by checking to make sure this green line is actually there. And then this last step is optional, but I would recommend it. We're just gonna place the on and off switch for this thing so that you can specifically toggle each item. So we're just going to place redstone links on top of these two front funnels here facing downward, set them to receive mode and put a cobblestone and stone in them respectively. We're then going to come up here and on top of this item vault, we're going to place two more redstone links in receive mode. And then you're going to place sand in the back one here and gravel in the close one. The very final thing that we need to put in is this lava here. It shouldn't flow anywhere and it should be right in front of the encased fan here. We should now be able to turn this thing on. Obviously, you have to connect it to some sort of power. I don't have that, so I'm just gonna use a creative motor. You can hook it up to this rotation speed controller on either side. I'm just gonna do this side. And once that starts going, nothing will happen because this clutch is still off with this redstone torch here. But if we head back over to the front, we can flick this lever and this should turn on and start looping, as you see here. And these should start generating cobblestone, putting it into this item vault, crushing it up, and dumping it here. We can see already that there are some issues going on. It looks like there's just gravel shooting out everywhere. Oh, and that is just because our crushing wheels are backwards. They're shooting them up. This is actually quite an easy fix. You just need to come back here, break these four shafts here, including the one underground, replace this one with a normal gearbox, this one with a vertical one facing towards this way, and then two more vertical gearboxes facing inwards towards these gearboxes. Then if we turn it on, we should see the crushing wheels going the right way. Wonderful. One final fix over here. The reason all of this gravel is flying out is because we don't have a block next to this smart shoot, this belt, and this belt there. So if we just place one there, that should stop everything. And then 
there should be no more gravel flying away. We can see that this is actually working because gravel is stopping right there. And now we should see these funnels splitting semi-evenly. If this funnel is taking all of the, the gravel, make sure you break it, wait a minute, and replace it so that this one takes priority. If you're having issues with these two sh funnels not splitting themselves as evenly as you'd like, or if you want more stone or more cobblestone, just make sure you place the one that you want more of first, but it should be pretty even as you saw with the rates over here. We'll get around about the same amount. And there you have it. That is the four in one, kind of technically six in one, cobblestone, stone, gravel, and sand generator that generates up to 2000 items an hour in a really small and compact design. And it also splits all four of them as, as best as it can with just two crushing wheels. But yeah, that is going to be it for me today. Be sure to check out my other tutorials in the playlist that this one is in. And also, I play Survival Create Mod, so you can check that out too. Alright, peace! Oh,